morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. I'm Natalie and today we are going to be doing a bit of work with pastels. So I'm going to give everybody a few moments to join before I start going through papers and things because paper is very important. Carol says morning all. Morning Carol. I'm just waiting for the stream. Says, update. Hi Deb. Having a good day today, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's only gone up to six. So, paper wise, what can you use? So, if you saw the samples that I did Here's for only the for the chocolate rock show on Friday, you'll have seen that I did some past work on just plain cardstock. But no, quickly, oh, go on then. Uh, yeah, interview went well. Um, waiting to hear back later, well, uh, early next week. Um, but I also have another interview tomorrow um, for a different job as well. So. Going well, isn't it? Yeah, it's all going well. <laughs> okay, and so then. So. Morning, Linda. The next pad I'm going to show you is a mixed media art pad from Aldi, believe it or not. So this one actually has really soft cotton paper, or well, certainly feels cotton anyway. So this is another one that we can use with our pastels because you want something that's got a bit of a tooth to it to help pull your colour. So as you'll see in a bit, the colour that you would get with your smooth cardstock will be vastly different to what you'll get with something that's got a bit of a tooth to hold on to that pastel. Good morning Delcy, morning Sunny Ann, uh, or Sally, sorry, and morning Joyce. Uh, thank you, Thea. Have an interview as well. Uh, thank you, Carol, for the good luck. Our next paper is Art and Pastel Paper by Winsor & Newton. And again, this is another toothed paper. So if I hold it a bit closer, you should be able to see that it's got a texture to it. There you go. There you go. So a lot of pastel papers will have a soft tint to them. So that you have like a mid-tone that you can build up from. And I have an English pad as well. And I've pulled a piece out that we can use. So this has a very slight tooth. So by comparison it's more like a sort of laid paper rather than a all-out textured paper. So hopefully you can almost see that. There we go. Also focus got there yeah, wait for it to catch up. Okay, I'm going to set those to one side so we just keep our papers up. So I'm going to be working with a mix of pastel pencils and pastel pans as well. Thank you, Linda. So first of all I'm going to use the cardstock and you want any quick drying ink pad for this one. So I'm going for the old faithful squid ink. Quink. Let's pop that on there so that we've got something holding that. Yeah, we've got one just underneath the... Um... I'm probably going to end up inking my platform, but I don't mind it cleans up fairly easily with a bit of alcohol. There we go. That's why we use a stamp platform, so we can give it another impression if we need to. And while I'm here, I'll do the rest of my stamping too. So let's bring in the pastel paper, first of all. 
Now because we're stamping onto a textured surface you are not going to get a complete impression that it's going to be absolutely perfect. So if you're working with something that is quite detailed as a stamp you are probably going to want to go for the Ingress pad or the mixed media pad. But for something like this stamp that is a little bolder you can probably get away with it. More just there. I may do in a bit. So there's our impression. You can see it's going to hit and miss where you've got that the valleys in the pattern. Looks quite funky. So next we have our English pad and let's go for that side so this is really thin by comparison but you don't have to worry about it being too thin to work with you can always apply it onto a piece of cardstock after and I'm so going to put my fingers in that <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> eyes are my up, that's why. Okay, time for prayer. I think it's still got ink on it, but I will just ink it up again just in case. So try to be careful that you don't move it when you're inking. There we go. And finally we have our mixed media paper. Oh, I'll go around this way so it's all the same way. There you go. I think it'd be easier to stick it out at the bottom, but. <laughs> there we go. So this one has much less of a texture, so you're going to get more of an intact stamp image. My poor stamp platform does now get me uh, leaning on it sometimes. There we go. So with those all stamped, we can set the stamp to one side and I'll give that a good scrub later. Are you going to say who the stamp is Yep, so the stamp is from Chocolate Rock. If you want to go and treat yourself, <laughs> and I'm trying to think of what the name of it is because it's just gone out of my head, but I'm sure Ian can pop up a link. So, there are our stamped images. So, we have our mixed media paper, our ingress, our pastel paper, and finally our cardstock. So, you can start to, to see how they're all going to come together. Now for the pastels. So I've pulled out two different applicators. You can use cotton wool buds as well if you really want to. So I have pencils which are really good for doing like the detailed sections. But we also have palettes as well. So we have sparkly ones if you want to go all out glitter we have a cool palette and finally we have a warm palette 
Now most of the skin tones we're going to do with our warm palette so I'm going to put this one down here to start with. So when we're working with larger areas you can move to a larger applicator so this is almost like packing foam so it's it's literally really dense so it's the sort of thing that you might get to protect some metal work or things like that so always look in your packaging but these are actually um, applicators that came with something or other they'll come back to me in a minute anyway so we're going to use this end here to do most of our base work so that we can cover a larger area at once now what I would say with pastels is that you want to be aware that you can only get so much pastel onto something that is smooth so you want to try and colour as is so for instance we could go for a lighter tone and we're going to put that in the section where it's lightest now you can see considering the colour in the palette so it's this middle one here to what it's coming out on the cardstock you can see it gets a lot lighter okay. So I'm just going to take that over her forehead. You're going to want the same bit of that colour going down the centre of her nose, like so. Across the top of the cheeks. And top of the cheeks. And you can blend all this in after. Then, as we start to move into the darker sections, we can go, okay, let's go up a tone. So I'm going to go from this one to this one. And we can start to work around the edges. So this is where you can start bringing in the 3D nature of the face. Now, if at any point you think, oh, I didn't want to do that there, the good news is you can use a putty eraser to pick up areas of colour so you can get it back to a highlight not necessarily back to white though so just bear that in mind you may not get a perfect highlight I'm just going to blend over like so now, once you've got a flat area of colour like that, roughly, we can start to get a bit more detail. So this is where your applicators are going to come in. I'm just going to use some eyeshadow applicators because you don't have to use something that's really expensive. Um, to be honest, you're probably better off not using anything expensive because pastel does tend to wear away eventually at your applicators. So, again, I'm going to go to that slightly darker colour and I'm going to pop a little bit in around here so around the top of the eyelids like so so that's going to start to push the eye back into the face we can do the same down the side of the nose like so and again down this side here So you now have something that is going like that and we're going to pop a little bit that same colour underneath the nose so that it's tucking back in. Now staying with that same colour we're going to extend that from the nose and down so just flick it downwards And we're going to blend from the side of the nose outwards too. Now, because we've now got the lighter side of the face, I'm just going to do a little bit of that same dark colour down this side. Now if we'd have tried to do this with that other applicator, we would have put too much on. Because you want one side of the face to be more in shadow than the other. Do you have to seal pastels? Yes, you do. Um, 
On the cardstock it doesn't tend to matter as much because it only holds a little on there but if you're working with something like the pastel papers where you really get into to loading them then you are going to want to fix them. However, if it's just for card making projects or things that you aren't going to worry if they're going to last 100 years or not <laughs> then you can just use some cheap hairspray and rather than just going like that over the top what you're actually going to want to do is spray the hairspray into the air and just waft it through so that you're picking up a fine layer all over so a bit like how you should do perfume and things like that so you just want to waft it through otherwise you can find that you get a spray pattern appear on your work now if you want something that is going to be a finished piece of artwork that you are going to want to last then you are going to want to use proper fixative so I'm just going to fill that bit in there so now we can start to think about what makeup she's actually wearing so I'm just going to go for a tiny bit of that red colour so just here so it's going to be really strong in the palette but again this is going to be where you're going to see in the cardstock it's not going to pick up that much it's nice light strokes and we're going to go down this side first so what I would say is with any colour that you are picking up do that left hand side of the face first because that's always, always going to be darker and then you can use that same loading for this side so we just get a hint of that colour through like so if there's anything you want to blend you can flick over to the clean side of your applicator and just blend back over the top and I'm going to pop a little bit so that it's a bit stronger just there on her eyes so she's going to look like she's made up and all you've actually done is just done a little bit of a dab so don't get bogged down thinking oh it's a face I can't do it okay so now with the nose we need to make that shadow a bit darker so I'm going to go up the scale so this time I'm going to come to this darker shade here and if you've still got some of that pink colour on your applicator don't worry because the nose naturally has a bit of pinkness to it anyway and we're just going to dab under her nose flick it round to the clean side and just sweep any excess up towards that nose area and give it a blow <laughs> yeah So now that we've got that, you want to do another little bit and it can help if you just tap off the excess on the spare piece of card. Says morning. Morning. <laughs> <Better late. laughs> and we are going to go up above where we've just done her nose. You're going to have a highlight which you're going to leave and then above that just gently sweep up nose like so so that you're going to get a little highlight on a nose but it's going to start to come back in and let's just push that out okay so you should now have a nose that looks like a nose If you need to put some more dark colour in the top, this is the point when you would do it. So I'm going to get some of that dark colour and we are going to pop that right into the corner of the eye and round underneath like a little V. So above the top and underneath. So again, around the top and underneath 
So the goal is that we're pushing those eyes right back, like so. And then finally, we're going to go around the hairline with that dark colour and blend that in. So hopefully you have something that looks like that. And we have a pretty face. Now I'm going to go to the next darker one. So this is this one just here. And we're going to do a little tiny dab just there. And one dab there, one dab there really doesn't take a lot so I'm going to go back to that ready pinky colour and I'm just going to bend that across her lips that way everything tones in and we can go to the dark brown and we can start to actually colour her hair. So you need to decide what colour you're going to go with her hair. In this case I'm going to go quite dark because I've used a black ink pad. If you used a lighter ink pad, like a sand colour, you could go blonde. And I'm just going to go all over with the dark brown. And I'm going to get really, really dark. So almost black but not quite and blend that in a bit more just down the centre of her hairline and down this side here and like so now when you're working with pastel you're going to get kind of fluffy edges if that makes sense where it's going to not quite be a clean edge so what you're going to want to do is use something like a battery eraser or a nice fine eraser and just tidy that up so now I'm going to go into the black in the sparkly palette and we can just darken that down where we need to like so so that's our first and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change applicator for the next one now let's go to let's go to our English paper and we can do the same again so this is where you're going to see the difference so we're going to start off with that middle tone in the skins and we're going to go over the top and you can start to see that the colour is going to sit differently on this paper <laughs> you can't see it at the moment oh, okay okay bear with me then so I'm going to do a nice little base coat. Oh, sure. I can see it, but obviously, if nobody else can, it's not good. So, let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, you can see it there. So, you can see that the colour goes a lot flatter it's going to stick more to the paper so that when we start to go up to the next shade which is the one that we put in around the hairline 
and across the eyes. Down the side of the nose. Across the bottom of the nose. Down the side of the cheek. Now I'm going to go to the pink, go across her eyes, so I'm going to do two lots across this one so that we're getting that light to dark and then the side here, bring some warmth in and use what's left on the applicator to do that side. And again, we can put a little bit of that pink on her nose too. Going up through the palette now. So now we're going darker again. Like so. So you'll notice I haven't done the eyes yet for any of these because I have to say it is easier to do the eyes with the pastels um, pencil pastels rather than the applicator but that's what I'm trying to say when I put my teeth in More of a shadow underneath that lip too because our lips come out and curl and so you need that little shadow there to bring them forward okay and you can use exactly the same techniques on the hands so look at your own hands and go okay they're usually a bit pinker so we can actually put some of that pink in and then look at how the shadow falls so it's one of those ones where it's quite useful to have a mirror I'm just going to bend that in there. there. And I'm going to go back to my other applicator to do her hair. So there's still going to be a little bit of that black on there, so start darker. and then we can blend it out with a lighter brown in a minute. And finally back to the black, just to do a little bit of shading down the bottom. So if we compare the two, given that those are the same colours, can you see the difference that that paper makes? I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> so now, <laughs> now we're going to use the mixed media. When Ian's finished arguing with an animal object. <laughs> <laughs> And we can do the same again. So start in the lightest section. And you can see that with this one, it's really going to grab the pastel. So this is why I always say that when you get a new pad from a new manufacturer, do a swatch test. Because they're each going to react differently. And paper is such an important, fundamental thing it will change your art supplies. So bear in mind that's our lightest colour so if we bring this one back in look at the difference. So we've gone from being this colour here 
to be in this colour here just by changing the paper that we are using. Now if you want to lighten it up you can always go with a slightly lighter shade or even let's put in a little bit of white just up here so she has a bit of a light onto her forehead like so. Then we're going to go to our next darker skin tone and we can start to do our blending down the side of the nose and across the eyes and again. And you can really see how much of a difference this paper is making to how much colour you get just from that single stroke and also how different the blending looks itself. So you're going to find that some papers you're going to get this really smooth blending like um, the pastel paper here where it almost looks airbrushed then others you're going to find that you can actually get more of a chalky feel to it. Now you can actually use pastels onto your jelly plate so one of the samples that I did for Leslie was actually stamping this image onto the gel plate and then colouring over the top of that stamped image with pastels before then pulling the print with white acrylic paint. So. Just going to go around the outside so that we're making that 3D form. Now we can add our colour and I'm trying to be consistent with which colours I do so you can see the difference in the, the papers at the end. going to go to that next dark colour and again get the nose, push back these bits here and tiny little bit of brown just at the bottom there just going to give that a little bit more of a push and just in the corner of her eyes there. So just looking at skin tones you can now see the difference that your paper makes. Okay so finally before I move on to the pencils let's go for the same again so I'm going to go back to the lighter colour now this is where you're going to really start to see that we can use that grey tone in that paper to our benefit so we're almost going to work in negative so I'm going to start off by doing our lightest areas first because we can use that grey in our darkest areas to actually help us. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit just there and a little bit just at the bottom of her chin there. So we have something that looks like that. Now we can go to our lighter shade and I'm going to pop a little bit in here and again we can pop just a highlight on the tops of the cheeks and down the centre of the nose 
and towards the bottom we can add some of that white so that we have our highlight there ready and we can do the same to those two bits that we just added there so we now have some highlights and I'm just going to do a bit across the forehead there we go so you now have something that looks like that now we're going to start to get up our shades again so we're going to go to our darker skin tone and we're going to let that grey start to work for us so in areas where you think you're going to have a cool shadow so for instance in the eyes and things we can actually let that grey play for us So would you both mind doing Sunday again this weekend? No, that's fine, isn't it? Yeah, Sunday's fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Sunday's fine, Carol, so, yeah, that's it. So I'm just going to take that round there. Now I can go to my pink again. And bear in mind that I said about using that grey. It can be a bit lighter handed this time. And let that grey show through our colour. Now we can go to our darker colour and we can blend back down there and down here, across under the eye there, like so. Bottom of the nose. I'm just going to do a little bit of a upward blend there. Um, slightest hint of colour just there. And blend that in. So you can see by going on to the grey that we can actually play with that grey through our image. I'm just going to put a little bit blush on my cheeks like so and then when it comes up to the hairline we can go above that grey area there so we just keep that hint of grey to say that there's a shadow there like so and again Let's do a hair quickly. And this is quite a good exercise to do if you're learning about the papers that you have in your stash. Actually go through and do the same image with the same material and just see how they play off each other. just to finish it off and there we go so again if I bring these in you can see how just by changing paper you get a totally different feel to the artwork Okay, so next we're going to move on to pastel pencils. So I'm going to be using different pastel pencils, but these could be any brand. And let's think, what colour eye should I give her? Let's go for a bit of Prussian blue. Oh, so she thinks she prefers the first one. <laughs> the normal card stuff. It's all such for courses. Okay, so I'm just literally going to dot in the colour. 
And the benefit of doing it with a pencil is you can actually sharpen that point if you need to. That is if your shop is in the room. <laughs> Do you want to? Yes, please. And I'm going to use my white pencil onto the grey so that we actually get a little bit of highlight. Like so. I can also do a little bit onto her lips and then when we colour it's actually going to be able to blend with that white. So if you had already done your, your lips with your other pa um, pastels that's fine. You can still go over the top and you can just blend it in or I can pick up a tiny bit of colour and just use that on a cotton wool bud. just to blend that in and it's going to cover up more of your inking than if you had just done your palette okay so what I'm going to do very quickly sharpen the pencil that is if it doesn't break For me in <laughs> while I get this out. <laughs> broken it. And I got my lead in stuck in the sharpener. Oh dear. Um, so while Natalie's doing that, um, we just wanted to mention that we've launched a crowdfunder um, to get one of our other products uh, off the ground. Um, and it's currently maybe having some issues because we had somebody who wants to donate who's. Uh, said they were struggling so um, we're going to be looking at that after the stream um, but we're looking for about 10,000 which seems a lot and it's a high amount but it's costing that just to get it into its first stage production um, because we have to have a worldwide um, search done first uh, which is, costs around 500 pounds for the patent um, and then there's another £3,000 for um, to actually get it to make sure that it's a viable product and then the other six and a half um, for actually starting production so people can buy it. Um, what is it? Um, without going into too many specifics, it's a... Um, He's not wanting to sharpen today. Um, how do you best describe it? It's an accessible cutter, is the way I, I put it, wasn't it? Because it's designed so that you can use it with only one hand or yeah. one finger, I should say. That's quite too reasonable. Yes, but it's not just a cutboard, is it? It's the idea being that you can do both cutting and scoring at the same time on the same board with a flick of a switch so you haven't got to change blades or anything else it's got both blades already in it um, and it is a case of you line up what you need and you can either cut it or score it on the same board uh, we're looking at having it as a 12 by 12 bed so it's a nice big Unit. Unit. Um, with storage. Possibly with storage at the moment, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it's different, like I said, it, it's not going to be a run of the mill cutter. There we go. Um, for one, it's one, but like two blades, and you just kind of have a, a push down bar rather than like a guillotine or a push wheel. So it's a push down, and then it, it does the cutting or scoring depending on what, hence we can make it one handed. It's the idea. So that is the plan. Um, if you 
interested or if you want to read a bit more about it, if you go on to the group. Uh, this is my design again. Uh, this is another one of mine. Yeah. Um, it, Ian comes up with the ideas. I just, I just make them, don't I? Yeah. I do the drawing. <laughs> so yeah, it's another one of my ideas. It's something I came up with. Um, but yeah, there's a, a link on the group to the crowdfunding page. Uh, if you do want to have a look a bit more detail, um, and anybody does, you know, there's an opportunity to get things like the foil shields, uh, as rewards, or there's first of the limited editions when they first come out that were a part of the rewards as well um, so there's different bits uh, or you can just donate if you want to you don't have to go for having a, a reward if you don't want to um, there's also one-to-one -one tuition available as a reward um, and other bits various things that we put up so if you'd like to go and have a look please do that's on our there's, there's a link on the group for the crown funding as well Okay, so I'm going to go okay. back. Um, I'll now. <laughs> now that my my sharpener is behaving, well, one of them. I'm just going to finish off doing these bits for each one. So I'm just adding a little colour over the top of the white pencil, so that you can blend that in. And then once you've done that blending, you can go back over the top with the white to just pop any highlights back in. Now, at this point, don't worry about things like eyelashes and other bits and pieces of your pastels. You just literally build it up and each time you do a layer, you're going to get smaller and smaller. Was the foil shield expected to go the ground? The foil shield wasn't, um, because... We could go local. We could go local for it. And, and it um, only takes one material. Yeah, it's one material to make. It's relatively inexpensive to me um, and we did all the design work we did all the engineering the engineering and the, the research and it's um, the engineering and, and the legal side isn't it that's yeah, costing the money because of this one being more technical sided shall we say mm -hmm. um, we've had to go through a company who can paint and it and deal with all the rest of it So they've actually had the designs for the oh, best part of a couple of years, three years? Um, yeah. Yeah, because we've been here too, haven't we? Yeah. So it's yeah. It's been nearly three years they've had the designs. Um, and they've just been sat on it for, <laughs> for us because we've been... Um, they said how much and we fell over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so hence we're trying to get it off the ground now, of course. It's, uh, have you painted the foil shield? I haven't, um, for the reason that it was already in public domain. Because we did the um, other because the it was already cup file. Yeah, because I gave because the cup files are out there. Um, we can't paint it. I can't really paint it because of the. It's already in public domain, so. Um, which is why we, which is why we're having to be kind of cagey about what we say about the uh, cutter, isn't it? Yeah. Because we want to still be able to paint it. One of the things you'll find when you're using your pastel pencils on your um, cardstock is that they act more like normal colouring pencils in that sense, so you can find they start to go a little bit shiny. So this is one way you're going to really see the difference with the, the papers to how much you get down. Yeah, it because it was all yeah. I might give them a call and ask the question. What? That painted in the foil show. Yeah. Okay, so I think I've done... Oh, I missed eyes on that one. Don't want to miss out the eyes, do we? Let's do the white first. So, it's easier with pastels to go light to dark than to try and go the other way around. Yeah, but you can also find that you, instead of adding white, you'll just be smudging the 
from the pigment that's already there. So. And then we can come back and do eyelashes and things. But I think everything happens at a certain time for a reason, doesn't it? And it just wasn't the right time when we originally went to them, was it? No. Come Thursday, it might be the right time. <laughs> right time to do it, right? Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, if in the meantime we've been in the lottery, you know. <laughs> So I've just sharpened my red pencil just so I can try and do a little bit more detail in here. So usually with lips what I'll do is I'll do a dark shade around the outside of the lower lip so it feels like it curves. And then take that same darker shade across most of that top lip like that. I'll do the same on this one. So, in from the sides, around the bottom, and then across most of that top lip. Now we're going to fall over now. Same here. Up, then side and underneath. And I think that's those done. Now just for the chocolate. So I'm gonna go for the umber. So this is quite a, a kind of greeny brown but it's also quite dark so if all you've got is a little 12 set of pencils like I'm using today then you can do that and then just blend it out okay maybe a little sharper in terms of sharpness for your, for your pastel pencils you never want to put them to a point point you just want to have them so they've still got a bit of a, a flat tip to them because otherwise you'll find that they just crumble when you try and use them and we can go across the top here and don't worry again about doing individual little eyelashes because it's not the type of pencil that can cope with that kind of detail not this scale anyway if you want to do something where it's that detailed, go bigger in the first place. And we can just do a little bit of colour from the inside of the eyebrows. That's going to give her a bit more definition. And we can do a tiny dot just there for her nostrils. There we go. So she's got a lot more definition to her face. So we're going to repeat that on all of our other ones. So again, a bit more 
Just say on my eyebrows. And around the eyes. And it's going to be those little details that are going to really finish off the image. I take it you can see that okay, Anne? You haven't told me a voice. Yeah. So with this one, because we've got so much of the image that is going over that texture, you might find that you need to just do a little bit more to tidy it up. Four minutes. That's got to be cutting it down to the wire, isn't it? There we go. And a little bit there. And again, we can just do a little bit onto her eyebrows. And his nose, and I'm just going to pop a little bit just there in the corner of the lips now where you've got your blue if you want to put your pupils in you can do with a brown pencil because the blue the brown or my black and I think with that I'm happy to say that those are all done so I'm going to show all of them so you can see them all at once and so we have our cardstock one we have our mixed media paper we have our pastel pad and our English paper. So I'm just going to slide these two out from underneath. So you can see all of those at once and you can see the difference the paper makes. So which one do you think now, Carol? <laughs> do you still think the cardstock one? Do you want to see if you can zoom in a bit here? Because they're a bit zoomed out at the moment. Um, I can use your yeah, I might just go back and do a little bit more highlighting on her face because it looks a bit dark when it's next to the others now. Can you up. Up. Okay. okay. Are you struggling? That way, but, um, that, one, that way. Okay. Yeah, you like giving me a challenge? <laughs> look behind you and you'll see what I mean. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, she says, yes, I don't like the grey one for some reason, and Deb says she likes the cardstock. Yeah, the grey one just needs a little extra work. Yeah, I'll try and be good and not fiddle too much. Uh, Linda says she likes the cast up, the image seems clearer. That's 
mainly because of that initial outline so try to um not necessarily get bogged down by the the cream. detail this uh, this cream or that cream should have really made made more of a, of a bigger choice there between the two <laughs> Tracy Christian says I like the bottom ones of the cardstock again. Yeah. Need a bit more colour on that one. Cool. Uh, the first one. So. The lawn in the middle next to the grey. That one. So that one you'll probably find is probably the most technically correct. Just don't get off there. But um, I I can fiddle. I'm allowed while while you're saying goodbyes and answering questions. So any questions before we go? This paper will be much more forgiving as you'll see because I can go actually, I can load this one up much more than the others. Doesn't seem to be any questions. Okay, so do you want to call it a day at that and we are back tomorrow. Don't ask which one for you. Which one do you like best? In terms of working on it, how they actually feel to work on, I actually like the middle. Um, cream closely followed by the grey believe it or not these two feel a bit um, messy I think would be the way I would put it you, you can't get quite that smooth blend so I know I know from what you can see it looks like they're, they're nice and smooth but <laughs> oh, distance size and altitude is in so if I hold that a bit close so here you can see it kind of goes a bit patchy. Mm. Is that down to the, the paper rather Yeah, the, that's down to the paper. The grain. The, the, the paper yeah. makes a... Yeah. And that one you can see there's like a little bit blotching. Whereas the, this one is much smoother and it goes on smooth. Mm. It's interesting to see the difference in paper. Thank you. And Tracy says you wish you had your tongue. <laughs> It is just practice, 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 and more practice. Right. And, with that. and with that, we will go. Yeah. Right yep. So, bye for now. Uh, Leslie's on at half twelve with the rest of the samples. So, if you want to see some more faces and the different ways that you can create with them, then. Go ahead and watch that one, and we will see you tomorrow with 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 what did I say? Glow in the dark stickers. Glow in the dark stickers. Yeah. So it's glow in the dark stickers tomorrow. So I'll see you then. It may just be me. I don't know. <laughs> Take care for now and bye.